Hello, it has been a long hot day, but I wanted to jump on and I wanted to share with you a thought. Somebody watched my compassion video today and they said, hey Heather, I'm hearing this, I'm processing this, but I'm afraid if I give myself self-compassion, I'm giving myself a pass and I'm gonna just get away with bloody murder. I mean, every night I'm feeling anxiety and stress. I'm in the kitchen eating all the things. And if I just have self-compassion, won't I make the situation worse? Well, here's, okay, so let's dissect that for a second. If up until now you have not been using self-compassion and you've been getting super ticked off with yourself because you're eating all this food at night because you're having these feelings and you're doing this behavior, if you're repeating that cycle over and over again, doing the more drill sergeant-esque behavior or the mean friend behavior, right, where you're being self-critical, self-judgmental, wouldn't we logically be able to say that that approach is not working? Because if it was working, wouldn't the nighttime eating have ceased to happen? Why, yes, you say, of course. So we can easily say that approach is not helping you. How do we know it's not helping you? Because it's not giving you the results you want. So number one, by disproving the myth that being hard on yourself is helpful is the key to beginning this whole process. Now, self-compassion, in my way of thinking, is a lot like parental love. I love my kids so much. I put boundaries and parameters on when and how they eat. I buy the food, I make the food available, and if one of my kids wants to eat, there's certain guidelines, right? This is when we eat, these are the foods available to you, yada, yada, yada. If I noticed, and I did have this issue where one of my kids was eating more at night, boredom eating, and I said to him, look, here's the new parameter. You can have a snack, but not watching TV. You're gonna have to take it in the other room. It was a loving, parental boundary. I wasn't saying he couldn't eat the food. I was just saying that if we're going to continue this, we have to do it in a healthful way. So a great way to show yourself compassion in the evening is you say, you know what? You're feeling a lot of anxiety and stress. And I notice each night we're going into the pantry and we're eating all this food. Here's the deal. You're obviously using the food to cope with some of this anxiety and stress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a healthy, loving parental boundary in for you. And I'm going to say that we're going to put a journal on the table. And every time you come to the kitchen to eat due to this anxiety and stress you're having, you're going to sit down and write down how you feel and what you're going through and what triggered you to be here. And we're going to wait it out 10 minutes. You can go do some laundry, go do a puzzle, go do whatever. And if in 10 minutes you still want it, you absolutely can have it. Notice in there, did I sound mean to myself? No. Did I sound loving and kind? Yes. Did I still have restrictions? Yes, but it wasn't coming from a place of trying to control and it wasn't coming from a place of shame or being critical. It was coming from a place of saying, hey, look, you're obviously struggling with anxiety and stress and whatever issues and you're choosing to handle it by eating this way at night. And I can see that and I wanna help you with it. So here's the steps we're gonna take each night in order to work through this, as opposed to, oh my God, you overate again. What the heck is wrong with you? Why can't you get this together? And that doesn't produce anything, right? So self-compassion is identifying the problem. It's saying, like, I see you're struggling with this. What boundaries can we put in to help here? What steps can we do to start making this better for you? And it actually works. I have so many people contact me and say, hey, Heather, just taking that 10 minute time out has reduced it by 50%. Hey, Heather, just by journaling what I'm feeling and processing it in a little bit of a different way and putting that delay of response has helped me. But notice, nowhere in there did I say, you absolutely can't have this food, you're too heavy, you shouldn't be eating it, I, you know, what's wrong with you? Why do you keep doing this behavior? None of that needs to happen. The self-compassion is, I see you're struggling. I wanna help you get through the struggle. I want you to feel better, not worse. And we're not gonna take away your vice because here's the deal, you're in a really hellacious situation right now. And you may still choose to have the snack so many nights out of the week or whatever. But if we see any kind of reduction, it's an improvement due to self-compassion. But go back to step number one, 
If you've not been using self-compassion and you're repeating the negative behavior that you want to see cease, then couldn't we make the argument anything that's in that ballpark is not working for you. So it's time to try something new. I hope that helps.